Hello everyone, this is Darwell20, and welcome to episode 47 of Darwell20's Let's Play series, where I built a second nuclear reactor between episodes. Uh, that's right, last episode, you know, I decided, eh, one nuclear reactor is good, two nuclear reactors is twice as good. I mean, that makes sense, right? I mean, I just felt like that followed. So uh, that's what I did. Uh, and as you can see, with two nuclear reactors running, we are just barely not producing enough power. Uh, to, to keep this running at full speed with three stacks of overclocker upgrades and the transformer upgrade in there. But it's running pretty quickly, to be fair. Like, look how fast that's going. I'm, I'm not complaining. I'm pretty happy with that. So once this internal buffer runs out here, it just, it's just going to run a little smidge slower. But that's okay with me, especially with that whole, like, you know, if we backlog our reactor we're going to be in trouble kind of thing uh so yeah basically just between episodes i stood here and did all the things and started playing around with stuff um i'm debating what i want to work on today um you know i think it's time to get into some higher tech techery uh we've gotten you know thermal and 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 ftb industrial contraptions done i think we should get into some higher tech stuff um Number one, I wouldn't mind having access to a digital miner for mechanism. Number two, uh, I wouldn't mind access to some of the faster crafting that mechanism makes available. And uh, so therefore, I think I'm going to start checking out mechanism today. I think it's a good time to get into it. Uh, also, mechanism has some pretty powerful gear towards the end game there once we really start going with it. So I have the following plans. Um, number one, I'm going to start doing some mechanism stuff. Number two, I'd also like to look at, I'm pretty sure we have this in the pack. Uh, compact machines and maybe uh, look into doing some compact machines type stuff with mechanism. I'm not 100% sure exactly how I'm going to use compact machines for it, but I'm going to figure it out. Um, so those two mods are, are probably going to be the focus of the next you know couple episodes. Uh, I really want to just amp up my tech. Meanwhile, I'll let this quarry run. It may or may not get to the bottom before we need more uh, uranium fuel rods. What I could do, though, is just make sure that I've got enough of these. 14 more seems like a plan. Um, just so that when and if um, they run out of fuel, which will happen in 18,534 seconds for that one, uh, when that fuel runs out, we'll be able to, uh, you know, replace it. Now, I did look. It doesn't look like this fuel, by the way, turns into anything. Just the, the fuel rod disappears when it's empty. So there's no reprocessing of, of spent nuclear fuel and all that stuff. Um, so just keep that in mind. There's not a lot there, right? Once you've got your fuel done, your fuel's done. Uh, so let's pop home and see what's up. Also, I think I did, I had to fix this off camera, but I just want to mention it because, yeah, it definitely happened. Uh, let's see, how's my, how's my stuff over here? All right, we're doing okay on discs. Yeah, not too bad. Um, I had to put some more drawers here because these guys were just clogging up the whole thing. This whole, this whole place was just getting full of junk. Um, so I had to, you know, do some things. There's probably a few others. Like, I'm suspecting that andesite's probably in there. Smooth basalt. A few other things. Um, but, meh, it's fine. Uh, I could always just kick off a few more 64K storage disks, which is what I did to handle the situation, right? I'd probably just ask for two more. Uh, we're missing iron still. We just never have enough iron. Holy cow, do we never have enough iron. Hopefully, uh, you know, what we're about to work on might help. We'll find out. Uh, so let's put this stuff away. Like, I don't need you guys no more. You can be here. You can be done. Uh, you can be done. You're done. And then we're going to open up this dude. And I'm going to especially play and use Mechanism in tandem with Laser IO, right, throughout the next uh, couple episodes, because I really want to focus on a few things there. Also, we should also also note that Flux Network is also in the pack now. Uh, which will make long-range transport of power a little bit easier. I mean, we always had Tesseracts, and I never, I, I haven't gotten into them yet. Uh, so Tesseracts was a thing that we could have done if we wanted to transport power a long distance away. But, uh, you know, we also have Flux Networks now, so that's cool. The other thing we could do is Reborn Storage. Uh, might not be a bad idea, only because I know we're about to need a lot of crafting. Like, a lot. Like, like a lot. We're going to need a lot of crafting um, capabilities here. Um, so how about I get myself, like, one more crafter? Or, well, two, two more. Um, I'm just going to get these guys placed here. No, not like that. That's the opposite of how I want you placed. Well, not quite the opposite, but still not how I want you placed. 
Uh, and the reason I'm going to do that is because I want to get reborn storage stuff going first. So I'm going to teach you how to make crafting frames. I'm going to make you uh, heat conductors, which are also useful. Uh, we're also going to want crafting CPUs. You might need to know how to make crafting upgrades for this. And you might also need to know how to make crafting tables for this. Uh, and then we're going to want crafting storage which apparently you need to know how to make chests for. So we're going to teach you that. Uh, maybe I should do that with oak wood, though, rather than the, than the fancy wood. Does that all sound cool? So Reborn Storage is a pretty neat mod, uh, and I like it because it does two things. One, it gives you a multi-block storage for mm, vanilla crafting recipes. So basically these guys. So rather than storing them all in individual crafters, you get a big multi-block structure that can hold many of them. Um, does Reborn have any kind of uh, book of Reborn storage? It does. Hooray. How do you get it? How do you get it? That uh, mm, laser I.O. Yeah. Uh. There's no recipe for it, though. That's interesting. How do you get it? Um, so let me make, like, one batch of crafting frames real quick. And hopefully that won't take too long with the smelting and the processing and all that and the resource constraints that we have oh well, yeah no that didn't really do much uh does reborn have a book that's a good question or i mean uh an achievements tab i don't see one nothing's jumping out at me here okay well let's do this i have a pretty good idea of how this works uh but let me just look into it real quick or i could just cheat in the book but i don't feel like going into cheat mode right now all right, so my understanding of things is correct. So basically, uh, the minimum size we can make is three by three by four. And I'm assuming that's the minimum size, like, external. So three by three by four. Let's go with that. Yeah. Um, so that means uh, we're going to want eight, 16, and eight, I believe. Yes. 24. Yeah, let's do that. So I'm going to get this stuff, and we'll be right back. Let me tell you, these heat conductors are expensive. Whew. Brutal. But I think I've got most of what I need to do here ready to go. I think. We'll see. Uh, so we don't want to stick this guy. Maybe we could, like, put him inside the wall here. That could be kind of cool. Like, built into this wall. Um, so what I'm going to want to start with, then... Probably maybe here. Let's get out this guy. So we said we're gonna do three by three by four, right? So then I want the floor gone and I want a ceiling gone. And then we should be able to do. Now if I'm not mistaken, this is how we build this guy. Okay, with heat conductors going here, here, on all sides, basically. And then we got two more. And then we're going to want a crafting storage and a crafting CPU. Now, this is a multi-block structure. So the way it works is the more crafting storages you put in there, the more recipes you can fit. And the more crafting CPUs you put in there, the more uh, quickly it can craft. So this makes it run faster. This makes it hold more stuff. And if I'm not mistaken, did I math this correctly? I did! Well, look at that! Multi-block crafter, ready to roll. How cool is this? All right, so now if I were to snag this guy, I should be able to boop all this stuff in there. Cool. Well, that ain't bad. Not bad at all. Now, I suspect, I suspect uh, that we're going to need um, a bit more by way of storage space. So I might want to bump this thing up a little bit. Uh, we're also going to want some cabling here. Now, I don't know exactly where the cable can connect. I assume anywhere-ish. See, now we can craft again. Cool. So let's get another one of these and another one of these. Um, so if I made this deep... I 
I could just go back a little bit more. And that wouldn't be the end of the world, I don't think. Yeah, it looks bad. Not bad at all. Yeah, I think I need more storage space already, so that's why I want to... I, I just saw how much I'm going to be able to hold with just the one, and, I, and it occurs to me, like, we're probably going to need more. So let's be prepared. So if I want to push this back one more, I only need two more heat, dudes. Boy, do I hope I have the iron for this. I did have to mine manually. You know what? In breaking this, I may have just destroyed my ability to autocraft those extra heat conductors we need. Uh, give me... Are you making something yet? Oh good, you're done. And then we're probably going to need a few more of these. Shouldn't be too bad, I don't think. Actually, we need a lot more heat conductors, don't we? I think we do, unfortunately. You need one, two, three, four more heat conductors, right? Ugh, missing 16. You're killing me. You're killing me, Smalls. I'll be back. All right, for some reason it didn't like that, so I'm making it an even four by four all around. Does that sound cool, four by four by four? Yeah, that should be fine. All right, so then I can throw another CPU in there, and I don't think you have to fill that in entirely. 159113 Maybe you do have to fill it all the way in. Uh no wireless transmitter in range. Say what now? Excuse me? what now? Did you break? Okay, that was weird. That was weird. Um, yeah, let me get, I guess, uh, I guess what I'll do is I'll get one more and then two more. Does that sound cool? One of you and two of you. And we're missing iron still. <laughs> is this still processing iron or are you onto something else? I did mine again uh, between clips here. And as always, we are, oh no, we got some iron cooking over here. That's kind of cool. What I'll do is I'll remove you and you, and that'll get iron in there faster. That's the way we get more iron. All right, so then I wanted two more of these. Sweet. That shouldn't be too bad. Let's go already. All right, good to go. So that would be you two. Go here and here. And now we're groovy. All right. And now we've got five pages of crafting recipes that we can populate in here, right? So all we gotta do is break our crafter and then populate all these guys and we're cool. So I'm gonna go do that uh, and we'll be back in a sec. All right, last batch of patterns going in. 
Look at that, nice. So we definitely needed two pages to maintain our current list of patterns. Now here's my question, is, is that all accessible from up here? I hope so. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh yeah, that's what's up. That is what's up, holy cow, that is cool. All right, so the multi-block crafter is what I would call good to go, right? Um, and then what we can do is just kind of frame this up a little bit. Cool. Just so I know where it is. Okay. And then that's where our multi-block crafter lives. I'm cool with that. I think that's great. I like it. Sweet. So now we have all the room in the world to make more crafting patterns. Oh, um, speaking of more crafting patterns, I should probably get a few of these because it's time to break into Mechanism. Uh, Mechanism is a high-tech mod. Uh, there's a lot to this mod. There's a lot of cool stuff that you can do. Um, a lot, just a ton, of, just a bajillion things. Like there's so much content and mechanism it's a little bit bananas um it's got machines it's got power it's got items it's got fluids it's got transfers it's got upgrades it's got it's got teleporting it's got nuclear reactors it's got fusion reactors it's got nuclear fuel it's got power storage it's got teleportation it's, I, a million things in mechanism um if you guys haven't played with mechanism before um it is it is just basically like one of the coolest tech mods out there. There's just so much content in it. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna play around. We're gonna get started in Mechanism uh, using some of the power stuff that we have available today. Uh, and then we're gonna have to start augmenting our power stuff because we're not probably producing nearly enough RF. Even with that guy back there running, we are probably nowhere near enough power gen uh, to keep this environment happy. So what I'll, there's probably two things I'm gonna wanna do here. Number one, Let's check out how much power we've got. Eh, you're at 31%, so we might want to make another one of those pretty soon. Um, and and now that we've gotten that, and also if we look at deep resonance, we should have lots of resonating crystals because pretty much any time I've, I've been out and about exploring, I've been looking for more resonating crystals. So number one, we should be able to make a better crystal soon, which would be nice. And I you know absolutely would like to do that. Like that is 100% a thing that I'm gonna want to do. Um, and we should be able to have no problem doing that because we'll have a lot more catalyst, a lot of this blue bar. Number one, if we finish burning up that crystal, we can turn that into blue bar. I could probably do it now, but you know, I'll let it burn up and then we'll go from there. But then also there's lots of power gen options for mechanism that we'll probably take a look at. And then there's also, also, um, is it big reactors? Extreme reactors. Uh, so a multi-block reactor mod that we can play with as well to generate lots of power. And ooh, that even has a nice book to it, sweet. Sweet. So we might check out Extreme Reactors and, and Flux Networks as well. So let's start with Mechanism, right? So really the best way to get started uh, with Mechanism is as follows. Uh, the first thing we're gonna wanna get is there's a there's a block called the Enrichment Chamber. And this is not the rock, actual right block that I want. We want the Metallurgic Infuser. That's the first one that we really want. The Metallurgic Infuser is how you start getting your initial resources from Mechanism. Uh, it infuses uh, resources into metals and uh, basically get you access to some of the cool advanced stuff that we're going to need to progress through the mod. Um, specifically things like control circuits. You can infuse iron or redstone into osmium and you get control circuits, for example. That's what the metallurgic infuser will let you do. And most of the, of the follow-up uh, components of this mod are going to need things like this, right? So there's, there's all kinds of stuff we're going to need to get to, to craft throughout the mod. So enrichment chamber we're gonna want um, in a minute, but metallurgic infuser is the one we're gonna want now. So let's get probably eight of, of these furnaces so that I can get, um, let's say four metallurgic infusers. That's not a bad start. Now I'm thinking what I'll do, should we have like a mechanism room, do we think? Um, because our basement's getting a little foolish. Our basement's getting just a smidgen. Or I could, well, I could get rid of this thing here. I could get rid of this line of machines because technically we really don't need these no more. And that would probably free up a lot of this stuff. And I could always just rebuild this later, right? 
I don't see why not. Uh, let's do this. Boy, do I have a lot of junk. Boy, do I have a lot of junk. Hey, I thought I was doing something cool here. Boop, boop. Nice. Alright, so back in a sec once I clear out some inventory and whatnot. Alright, so... Let's take a look at this. So I've got uh, my metallurgic infusers. I usually make four of these because there's four uh, infusion types. Generally speaking, coal, redstone, diamond, and refined obsidian are the four types of things. So let's get our laser node set up. And here's what I'm going to try out. Um, let's get four of these guys. And I'm going to have energy being inserted here, here here and here and I'm gonna prepare with these guys and we should see our lasers drawing now cool I've just I've just been excited to play with my energy cards uh, so that should be good cool okay now technically I could feed energy under here but I want to play with laser IO energy transfer right so you guys should all be ready to insert energy now we need to extract energy so let's get um, this side here, uh, not redstone, so extract. Now he'd only do a thousand off a tick without overclockers. So let's get, um, you know what, I haven't made overclockers yet, but we probably should add them to the auto craft list. I added a bunch of the other components and I forgot to add overclockers to the uh, components here. So let's make you and then four of these should make it so I can do 100,000 RF a tick, which should be more than enough for now. And then as we get further along, there's ways we can make this even higher. Theoretical max per side should be 900,000 RF per tick. So that should be pretty good, right? I think that should be enough. I guess we'll find out. I mean, some late game stuff is generally more than that, but you're getting into ridiculous numbers with RF at that point. Uh, so what I'm going to try now is we're going to find out if pipes will connect to my cards happily enough. So that, I have no idea. I have no idea if this will work. If it doesn't, we'll come up with something. There should be a laser being drawn here, though. There really should be. Uh, that extracts, though. That transfers out. So you don't want to transfer in, probably because you can't. Interesting. Yeah, this might be a little bit of a nuisance, but we'll see what happens. So are you are you guys getting power here? Probably not. And I also don't want to forget to connect my lasers up properly. So you to you, and then you to this guy. Yeah, the, the fact that the laser's not drawing here is telling me that the pipe will not feed energy into the card correctly. So that, that should work. But I don't know if that's on me or what. Might be, might be. Because if I went with a universal cable, which is another option we could go with here. Now we don't have any steel at the moment, but steel we will be able to get from steel grit, which we can get from a metallurgic infuser of coal and enriched iron. So this is one of the first things we're going to want to get, right? We're going to want to put coal into a metallurgic infuser. So let's try another way to get power into these guys. Deal? So what I'm going to remove is this card here. And how about behind this dude? I might want shrink. Goodness. Flying with shrink is a bad time, apparently. Um, but what if we... Okay, I see I'm already extracting from the back of you, aren't I? Hmm. Where can I hook up power to this? I want to try and do this in a smart way. Give me a sec to think this one out. You know what I could do? What I could have is a cube or a cell... What if I just got a basic energy cell for now as like a temporary solution as a buffer between these guys, right? 
that might be the that might be the way to play it. I think that might be the way to go. Just as a temporary buffer. Now, granted, like I said before, you could absolutely, you could absolutely, 110% just connect your cables here. But I'm trying to play with laser IO. Because in my mod. So now if I put you here. And then we configured you on the bottom to start accepting energy. You should be getting power through this guy. Perfect. Now remember, he can only transfer out a thousand RF, but if we got an augment in there, I can make like, well, I don't, this is only temporary, so I'm not gonna go too deep. But if I put this in here now and set the output here, now he should be good and everybody should be getting power. Nice. That looks good, that looks better. Now, if we wanted to be sure, I'm 95% I'm, I'm sure that because the laser's not drawing, this isn't gonna work. But let's test it just to make sure that we run out of power and don't actually get any. So the first metallurgic infuser I'm going to set up is for coal. So I'm just going to throw a stack of coal in there. And you'll notice that it builds up carbon. And then if I throw iron in there, I'm going to get half a stack. Let's do like 16. So see how the power is... Is it dropping or no? Is it working? No, oh, it might actually be working. Then why aren't you drawing the laser? Because you should be drawing the laser. But if you're actually working, that's kind of cool. Yeah, maybe I don't need that buffer then. That would be nice. It would be. All right, well, maybe it is working. And then similarly, we're gonna want some, oh wow, am I that low on redstone? Um, I'm only gonna throw eight in here because we can be more efficient with this stuff and we absolutely should be. Because one of the first things we're going to want to make is an enrichment chamber. So we get some redstone and osmium, and we'll get some basic control circuits. Okay, so let's do that. Osmium. And that's going to infuse there. And then you're also... Nice. All right. So I guess the power thing is working. And you are getting power from that, right? Because if we break this, see how the power is dropping now? All right. So I guess the only question is why... Doesn't it draw the laser? I'm gonna have to expect. I'm gonna have to investigate that bug. But other than the fact that it doesn't draw the laser, it is actually working, which is cool. I like that. Nice. Okay. So let's get our enrichment chamber now, because that's gonna be an important one. In order to get that, we're gonna need steel casings, which is gonna need four steel. So let's get. Um, actually, let's take you out here. I can probably take accelerate this. Oh, yep, yeah, there goes all the power. <laughs> there goes all the power. And then we're going to want to smelt you into steel. All right, so now we should be able to make our first steel casing. And then our first enrichment chamber. And then we can add our dude here, link these two, add an insert card for power here. Because we're going to be interacting with, you know, all these sides for many different things. So you're probably saying to yourself, Dyer, why are you doing this stupidness with the lasers when you could just be running your energy pipes under here? I agree. Stay tuned. Okay, that's all I'm going to say. So now if we get, so notice this, here's here's the big deal, right? If we were to get some redstone, right? Notice how there's no redstone in there right now. If I put one piece of redstone in, it adds 10 millibuckets of redstone. Um, and another will add another 10. So now we're at 20. And then this guy is going to use the 20, I think, to turn this osmium ingot into a control circuit. Correct. However, alternatively, we can enrich our redstone in an enrichment chamber, okay? And the enrichment chamber, I want to say, makes the redstone worth eight times as much, which is a significant bump. So now if we come over here, instead of getting 10, we get 80. So 150,000%, I recommend, as first thing you should do, get an enrichment chamber uh, and use that to enrich your redstone, okay? 
because that's the way that's the way we do it. Okay? Trust me on that. That's the way to go. Let's de shrinkify. Sweet. And now we can get lots more redstone stuff. And the same for coal, by the way. Um, so if you're going to do that with coal, you could absolutely do that. And I will. All this costs is energy, by the way. So as long as you have energy, you're good. And time, I guess you could say. How are we for power over here? Eh, seen worse. Right? So enriched carbon is the same deal. And we can pop that dude right into there, and the same thing happens. Cool? Nice. Now, what I might wind up doing with this card over here... Oh, not the right one. I might set him to round robin mode, which should help keep things powered a little bit better. I went too far on that, but you get the idea. Um, so, like, by default, with, with normal mode, it's going to follow the priority system with laser IO. So, it'll do the nearest one first... Try to give it power, and then move on to the next, and the next, and the next. Um, if you put it in round robin mode, it'll kind of take turns visiting all the machines and make sure they all kind of get power and keep up with it. So round robin mode is not a bad idea for um, for power, but totally up to you. I mean, you obviously might want to do priority system as well. Like for example, you could prioritize making this thing have power all the time so that he's the first one to get power on a network. So there's different ways you could handle power generation. All right, so I'm going to say this is a pretty good wrapping up point for the episode here. We got a lot of good stuff done with Reborn Storage, which means we have tons of capability for crafting manual vanilla crafting stuff, right? Um, we've got the basics of mechanism up and running. So we've got our first bits of enriched iron. Uh, we're going to want to come back next episode and automate this stuff pretty quickly. And that's where the laser IO components are going to come into play. Um, from there, um, you know, this is probably where we're going to want our crafters to come back into play. Uh, and this would probably be a good time to demonstrate how this will likely work. So there's sidedness to these guys that we can configure where items come in at and where items go out at. And we're going to be messing with all this um, in the next episode or two. Um, but what we want to do is pretty simply probably just have stuff like this. Okay. And then I just have to tap into the refined storage cabling, which should be something around. There's some up directly above it, right? I could probably just tap right into here. That sounds good. That sounds cool. So cables. Perfect. And that's where we'll start next episode, right? Um, so we're going to start progressing through mechanism. We might wind up moving our ore processing into mechanism uh, because mechanism will allow us to get more ore processing. I don't know how high it can go now, but there's like a five machine or a five tier process. Uh, it involves a lot of machines, but pretty easily you can get the first three going. I think the first two will probably match what, what Pulverizer and, and Redstone Furnace are doing uh, with 1.3x. Pretty sure that's the case. So if we look at, for example, um, our usages for this guy, we can kind of see that we can, we can start with the enrichment chamber, which will give me three becomes four. So, one point, you know, three percent. So, you know, that's pretty cool. I'm curious if you actually have to put all three in there or if it's just showing me that. And the reality is, let's see, do we, can we get some raws? I'm just going to test this out because I'm curious now. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, that's interesting, actually. That is actually very interesting. That's a different style of processing that we may need to uh, think about because we will easily backstuff things in a bad way, right? If we think about that, we will easily gum up the works. So we'll either need to ensure that it puts three in there, which we can do with laser IO in exact mode. Yeah, we could, we could do that. 
Yeah, so that might be a fun challenge. Um, but for now, like I said, wrapping up points. So Double 20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We'll come back next time. Uh, we'll probably look at doing that. So that gets you, you know, the first three. But like I said, there's other there's other processes that we can follow. Usually, let's see, chemical injection. Three becomes eight shards. And those eight shards... Okay, cool. So they have to process a bunch, as you can see. But we can get there. Um, so that is pretty cool. So there's a lot of processing that we can do to, to really get stuff cooking better. Might be the purification chamber. That looks like it might double. That gets me clumps, which then can be crushed in dust. Yeah, so that's, if we went that way, but well, we're going to need to produce oxygen for that. The other one that we were looking at was chemical injection. That needs hydrogen chloride. So that's the fourth machine, and chemical dissolution, I think, is five. So there's basically five different ways you can process ore, um, and they each build on each other. So option one will give you the 1.3x like everything else, and then option two looks like it might be doubling. So we might want to get into that sooner than later. So anyway, wrapping up point, double 20 sign off. Hope you enjoyed the episode. We'll come back next time. There is a lot of mechanism stuff to uh, get into and play with. For now, take it easy.